It's that time of the week where I look at the last seven days of Manchester United. We were terrible against Newcastle. I think Gattuso sums up exactly how Man United are this season. Sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. But as well as that, we're going to be talking about this man, this pundit, and this man as well. Let's get into the United Rewind. There really is only one point we can start on as far as I'm concerned and that is Chris Smalling. He was atrocious against Newcastle just like he was a couple of weeks ago against Spurs. Two away losses in our last two games and for me Chris Smalling has been at the core of why that has happened. You look against Newcastle, he didn't win a single tackle in 90 minutes. That lunge on Gale, that was a penalty. His indecisions everywhere. Why is a centre-back diving? It's unbelievable. You know, Phil Neville, he doesn't talk much sense that often, but if you looked at his Match of the Day 2 analysis, he got it spot on about Chris Smalling. Every single decision that Chris Smalling makes, it makes a Manchester United fan uncomfortable. Simple passes aren't simple. Nothing simple with Chris Smalling. Just every single thing he does, it seems to be the wrong decision. And when you get a centre-back as a fan, as a football club, you need your centre-backs to fill you with confidence that you can rely on your defence to keep it watertight and just play it forward to your midfield and start the attacks. It's the complete opposite with Chris Smalling. And we can't look at him as a player with potential anymore. He's 28. Technically, this is the peak of his career. Now, the peak of his career at United came under Louis van Gaal when he played in a formation which arguably was too passive and made the centre-backs look better than they were. In the two seasons that have followed under Jose Mourinho, we've seen nothing to prove that that is not the case. Right now, Manchester United, as far as I'm concerned, cannot move forward properly whilst Chris Smalling is in defence. We've spent 600 plus million since Fergie retired and we're still playing Smalling and Jones in defence. Yes, Eric Bailly is injured. Not sure why Lindelof's not playing. Not sure why Rojo's not playing. But until we get rid of Smalling and Jones being in defence, we can never be a modern football team that relies on your centre-backs to start the attack. That's what centre-backs do now. They're not just defenders, they're part of the team moving forward. And until we're not playing Jones and Smalling, United simply cannot do that. So I've got a scapegoat him because he was shit against Newcastle. Now another player that was poor against Newcastle, but for reasons entirely different, was Paul Pogba. Jose Mourinho made a massive mistake by starting Paul Pogba against Newcastle. You saw it in the warm-up, Pogba pulled up, holding his hamstring. He didn't look comfortable at all. But then at that point, you would like to think, Pogba told his manager, look, look I'm, I'm fit to play, I can play, trust me. And you think, okay, give you a chance. 10 minutes in, it became abundantly obvious that Pogba was not fit to play this game. And just like Wayne Rooney, when he used to play with injuries, Pogba just wanted to play football. But at that point, Mourinho, as the manager, can see that Pogba is struggling and should have taken him off. And eventually he did, after 66 minutes. But that was about 60 minutes too late. Paul Pogba was a passenger in the game. John Joe Shelby, cashing in his once a year fantastic performance, decided to use it against United this year. He made Pogba look very, very average because Pogba wasn't fit enough. He wasn't ready to play in that game. And Mourinho made a massive, massive mistake by leaving Pogba on because our midfield got overrun by Shelby. Maybe that would have been the case if Carrick had started anyway, but it certainly didn't help that Pogba started a game where he clearly wasn't fit. Now carrying on with the topic of Paul Pogba, there is one person who I find it very hard to agree with 95% of the time. Graham Souness, a bitter, bitter Scouse pundit, but he wrote an article this week in the Sunday Times and it was another bit of criticism aimed towards Paul Pogba. But for maybe the first time, I sat there and I found myself agreeing with quite a lot of what Souness had to say about Pogba. Because Pogba cannot play in a midfield too. Souness was having a go at the discipline or the lack of discipline that Paul Pogba has in a central midfield position. And I think Souness is spot on. I think that's maybe why we're seeing Matic so overexposed and so overtired. It's because Pogba drifts away from a central midfield position. It's not his best role. And until we continue to play with a three-man midfield instead of a two-man midfield, we'll never properly get the most out of Paul Pogba. You saw his performance, say, Everton away earlier this season. Something else that Souness picked up on. Pogba was fantastic, drifting out 
out wide, firing in crosses, he was dangerous. In a midfield two, he finds himself far too often concentrating on what he has to do defensively, and that takes away from what he's doing in attack or vice versa. Popper does not work in a midfield two. And he's got a good point as well as soon as that three goals in 22 appearances this season for Paul Popper, it's not a good enough return. He has got lots of assists. So that's been where he's been shining this season because Lukaku and the likes have actually been finishing the chances he's been creating. But Popper himself, he's a dominant. He wants to be that elite, world-class central midfielder. And those players have to score more goals. And it's not as if he hasn't been getting into the positions to do so. His firing has been off. Some of his free kicks have been off. But the main criticism I have of Paul Popper is maybe because Jose Mourinho is not using him in the right position. But this point here is that Graham Souness, I don't like you. You're a bitter man, but you are correct in a lot of your points here you're making about Popper. It's kind of how I feel as well. And one final point about Popper from the last week. After the Munich air disaster memorial at Old Trafford, he was pictured dabbing. But he was dabbing to a young fan. And somebody tried to fucking spin this as a negative thing. But here's the video of what really happened outside Old Trafford. Hi right, guys, you okay? Hey, David, hey, David. Hi right, guys, you okay? Oh, thank you. Oh, thanks for coming over. Here you go, big smile, Alex. The little lad, Alex, he just wanted to meet Paul Popper. Popper obliged, so don't try and spin this in any sort of negative way. It's just Popper interacting with a fan. Don't try and spin it negatively. And some good news in the last seven days. Luke Shaw, it looks like he's going to get a new contract at Manchester United after what has been a tough, tough two years for the kid. Mourinho has said, look, he's been working hard in training. He's happy and he's going to get a new contract. And for me, I'm absolutely delighted because United, over the years, we've seen so many players, Ravel Morrison tops this list, of players who have so much talent but don't have the application to get the most out of it. With Luke Shaw, we saw in that season under Van Gaal when he started on the left with Memphis Depay, he's got all the talent in the world. And he's shown in the last two years in his recovery from this injury, mentally and physically, that he has the application to make the most of it. So he's going to get a new contract to Man United and I'm absolutely delighted for him. But at the same time, why is he not starting then, Jose? You know, Luke Shaw is fit, but you're sticking with Ashley Young as our left back. The 32, 33-year-old converted right winger come left back. Why is he starting? You know, Ashley Young has done a job for Manchester United. But in the same way a Primark jumper does the job for you in the cold. It's alright, but there's a lot better quality out there. And that's what United have in Luke Shaw, a much better left back. And I don't get why Jose Mourinho is not playing him. You know, he played him for like five, six games and he was, he was fantastic. But then he dropped him when Young became fit again. Don't put Shaw on the bench if on one occasion you're saying that Shaw is one of the best left backs in the league and on the other occasion he's being benched for a right winger at left back. Make your mind up, Jose, and start Luke Shaw. And that's it for this week's United Rewind. Let me know if there's any other points you'd like me to discuss in next week's video. As I said, talking about Luke Shaw, Jose Mourinho, Newcastle, unfortunately, Chris Smalling, and lots more. So let me know if you like this video, drop a like on it as always, and subscribe to United People's TV. If you're new, we'll see you soon.